Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the SA Voice podcast. I'm your host for this episode, Amanda. And instead of being a co-host, today we have Brian as our interviewee. We're starting a series on the board of directors at St. Lawrence, and Brian is the secretary on the board of directors. Is that correct? That is. Um, yeah, it's a really cool role and a really cool opportunity. I kind of fell backwards into it last year because they were looking for people and I'm loving the chance to, to learn and to represent the students in another new role. It's great. Awesome. So since you're our first board of directors member to be on, can you explain to um, some people who might not have heard of the board of directors before or are new to the college what exactly it is you guys do? So essentially what we're doing is we're giving a voice to students' interests. So like there's the executive branch and they're the ones that really are providing the day-to-day -day actions behind the scenes. So they're the ones that are taking the money that are given to the student association and making things like the food pantry happen or all these kind of events like orientation. And our job as the board of directors is to basically provide some oversight and some insight into what students want and to, to use our fiduciary responsibility, which is our responsibility to the students as a whole, not just our own interest and to represent what we perceive to be best for students now and going forward into the future. So we're basically your eyes and ears on the board. Nice. Good to know we have lots of people representing us. So what made you decide to be on or run to be on the board of directors? Um, I'm going to say it's kind of a almost like accidental thing. Uh, I've always been interested in governance and, and making my voice heard. It's one of the reasons I wanted, wanted to go into accounting is because I feel like you know, it's a backbone of our industry. And so being on the board, it allows me to to see the pulse of what's happening and to try to affect change in a way that I see it to be po a positive manner for all of us now and going forward in the future. Nice. What's been your favorite thing that you've done with the board of directors? You mentioned you kind of oversee some events and services at the campus. Yeah. Um. So, you know, actually, I think one of my favorite things I've done so far was Kind of promoting the idea of having all of us come onto the podcast. I think just getting our faces out there is like last year, uh, when I was able to come in and join some of the meetings at the tail end of last year's board, I really didn't know any of them. I didn't know who was representing me on the board. So I think that's one of the biggest things so far is just trying to get some of our faces out there. So, you know, if we're walking through the hallway or just, you know, wanting to touch pe people want to reach up an email, I think providing this avenue of getting our, our likenesses out there just for everyone to know who we are, I think is my favorite thing so far. And it definitely allows people to put kind of a face to a name so we know like who's communicating with us or who we can communicate with on um, that type of thing, especially with some of us still being online or being on campus and being able to say, hey, there's Brian. I know who that is. <laughs> exactly. So what surprised you about being on the board of directors? What's something you kind of weren't expecting going into it? You know, honestly, I was expecting there to be some responsibility. But just knowing how much, because the, the, the Student Association, it's a multi-million dollar corporation. So in the span of like a couple of months from think, thinking of possibly running for the board and being on there and like being on the, the having an impact on a multi-million dollar organization that affects thousands of people. It's kind of one of those little, little bit of humbling experiences, like what did I get myself into? But no, it's it's been great and I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, it's... Uh, it's definitely a different experience and one I would highly suggest for anybody that's interested in, in leadership positions or wanting to be involved in public corporations or just wanting to to help with the governance and the betterment of people around them. I, I think it's a great opportunity for everyone out there. So you mentioned kind of um, what people can kind of expect if they want to go into it. Uh, what are you kind of looking to get out of your time on the board? Um, Honestly, I, I'm Listen, I'm, I'm looking to, to make a positive, tangible impact on the lives of those around me. I'm hoping to, to network a bit and to meet some new people, maybe in some different programs or di different spheres that I would not be able to meet in my normal program or my, my normal day-to-day -day dealings. And I'm really looking just for the experience. I, I think it's a really, really cool experience to be put in a position of such responsibility and in like, so early in my career and where I want to go, things. I think it's one of those great things I can build off as I'm going forward out into the workforce to, to be able to walk into an entry level accounting job or what have you with the experience of serving on a board like this. I think that's invaluable for anyone who wants to go into any career like this or any kind of management position, no matter what it is, business or otherwise. I think it's it's 
crazy. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you mentioned um, accounting. You're in the accounting program. Is there anything that you've been able to, obviously working as the secretary, take into uh, your position on the board of directors or vice versa that you were able to apply from your position to your program? Yeah, I, I think one, some of the, the crossovers are obviously are the interest in uh, you know finance and like knowledge of finance and knowledge of things on that nature and just the attention to detail, I think things like that are, are really big crossovers. And that's part of the reason I wanted to do this is because you know, I want to take, you know, this kind of minute attention to detail, like you have to have in accounting or some of these other fields and apply it in such a manner so that, you know, like try to really get granular things, but also try to retain that that wide scope. And uh, I don't know, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out myself, to, to be honest. But as I learn more in both roles, I think they're going to have a positive effect on each other. You know, it's one of those things where you learn in one side and you're going to be able to positively use it in another manner. Mm, that's for sure. Uh, so how can you mentioned people can get involved in the board of directors? There's an election coming up, if I'm remembering that correctly. How can students kind of get more information on getting involved with that? Okay, well, right now, uh, I think we'd just be reaching out to the Student Association. There's going to be an official uh, call for it. There's a by-election, you know, due to pandemic and other reasons. Uh, one of our people realized that it would be a better opportunity to, to go to a different uh, institution. So we have a couple of uh, we have a couple openings, so we're going to be running a by-election. There's going to be an official call out soon. It's going to be go going through the, there's going to be an election officer, and they're going to be putting out a call to the whole school. And once that happens, there's kind of a series of checklists that one must do. So you need to get some of my signatures to, to people saying that I think this person would be good for this. You know, it's a short essay, things on that nature. Uh, so right now, I think it would just the thing, best thing that people would do is think about what they want to do, think about why they're interested in this and what they you know could bring to it, and maybe just start talking to some people like, hey, do you think I could be good at this? Maybe talk to a couple of professors and and see like, hey, what would you think about me in a role like this? And start to kind of build that positive momentum in that regard. And then once the, the call goes out, then you can get your name in there. And there, there's a period where the um, applications come in and then there'll be an election period. So just try to build a momentum, build that thought process and just try to kind of really start thinking about it in a way that makes sure that you really want to do this. Because it is a bit of a responsibility, but I think that it's right for a lot of people. Don't be scared off by the responsibility, but I think it's you want to do it. You want to really be sure that you're interested in doing it and you're going to stick with it. Mm -hmm. That's definitely some good advice, and I know um, talking to professors about it is definitely a good idea too, because they notice more than you think. Oh like, yeah. I know I've talked to professors, and it's like, wait, you remember that type thing? So <laughs> definitely a good idea to get some feedback if it's something you're interested in, for sure. Uh, so what would you say is the biggest motivator or something that people should look for, even if they just want to like get involved in maybe a club or like another service at St. Lawrence, what would you kind of recommend for them? Uh, the Student Association has, uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. Like there's, there's a long list of clubs you can get involved with. There's a lot of other things that are not necessarily Student Association related. You know, there's like for the School of Business, there's an actress. There's lots of programs around college. You just something you need to look for a little bit more than others and other ones are just kind of right in your face. We have, obviously there's a lot of like, um, there's club days where there are massive signups and things along that nature. So getting involved in that aspect, just finding a way to be honest. All right, so we've gotten to know a little bit about Brian, the secretary on the board of directors. Now let's get to know a little bit about Brian, the student. So we're gonna have a little fun, random session here. So. What are three songs that you could listen to on repeat just indefinitely? Oh, uh, Jay-Z's Moment of Clarity, Siesto's Adiago for Strings, and Avicii Fade into Darkness. <laughs> nice, definitely a good mix in there. Very, very, a little bit all over the place, but I've been going heavy electronic recently, and like it was, I think it was Avicii's birthday like yesterday. So he's been heavily on my mind. So I can always, I can listen to some Avicii all day long, every day. <laughs> nice. So do you have any pets? And if so, what are their names? What are they? Um, yeah, I have two cats. Um, one is lovingly called Derp because, well, you know. <laughs> uh, so there's MJ and Lulu and they're, they're both cats. They both have very distinct, interesting personalities. And uh, sometimes they get along and sometimes they don't, but I love them both. Nice. Can you pick a favorite? 
Ah, uh, I think it's easy just because she just she's a derp and she needs love. You know, Lulu can take care of herself, so she won't be offended. I think Gigi would be sad. Aww. Uh, what's a talent that someone might not be able to guess that you have by looking at you? Uh, so I like to go to all these festivals and things, and I can do this thing called like um like staff spinning, where it's like you have a staff and you you can kind of twirl it and just like you can spin it around like off your arm, like just. It's called fire staff spinning. If anyone wants to look into it, I'm not very good at it, but if someone wants to look it up on YouTube, that's kind of an idea of what I can do. <laughs> Thanks. We'll have to get you to perform that on the podcast sometime. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, all right. So what's one popular food item or dish that most people like that you would just love to get rid of forever? Oh, and by the way, I wrote some of these questions, folks. I put this one specifically for this. Mayonnaise. <laughs> I hear the passion. It can just be called from the face of the earth. I'm just, I'm not into mayonnaise whatsoever. Really? That's interesting. Oh, no, I can't live with it. Okay, I'm going to flip it on its head there. What's one <laughs> unpopular dish that you just can't live without? Oh, it depends on how you look at green vegetables. Because a lot of people have a hatred towards them because of how their parents cooked them. But like... I'm about, like like rapini or broccoli are two of my favorite things. Like they're they're just both absolutely delicious if you cook them right. And a lot of people hate rapini, especially I find. But yo, I'm about that. Give give me some butter, some garlic, some chili flakes. Oh man, I can eat it for days. Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah, I find <laughs> definitely cooking technique can have an influence on whether something tastes good or for that, yeah. not so much. <laughs> All right. And finally, if you could do anything without worrying about like money or anything like that, what's the one thing you would do? Honestly, I think it's kind of like what I'm building my career towards. Um, I actually like, I think, I assume we were talking about like my own personal gain here, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the biggest things that's lacking in society, honestly, is like financial literacy knowledge. And Part of the reason I wanted to go into accounting and eventually some of the past I'm looking at is because I want to kind of take the knowledge I'm learning and give it to other people. So if I could, I would love to just start programs and teach people some of these basic concepts of budgeting and saving and how to do personal taxes and how to do things along that nature. Because I think one of the main reasons for a lot of this income inequality, well, one of the reasons, not one of the biggest necessarily, but is because people don't know how to to handle their finances, right? And so you have people that you have two people that can make the same amount of money, and with a little bit of planning and a little bit of strategy, there can actually be a massive discrepancy in terms of their overall wealth because they're not treating it well and they're not using their wealth in a proper way. So if I could, I would just go around and help set up programs to teach people how to manage their finances of their life. I definitely think that's a good idea because I know um, for me, I didn't grow up in Kingston, but when I was in high school, my grade 12 math teacher, I think it was advanced functions, went mm -hmm. around the room and asked us all what we were doing for post-secondary or when we graduated. And one person needed the concept we were learning for engineering. And mm -hmm. none of us knew like budgeting, balancing, handling mortgage and all that. So I think that would be a really good idea to kind of let people know because I know math class my first year is when I learned how to do a mortgage. So that's definitely something that would be good to know right off. I feel that. I feel that. And I, I think there's a lot of people out there that have that same idea. And yeah, so if I could, I'd do that. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Brian. This has been a lot of fun. We hope you all enjoyed it as well. And you'll join us to get to know the rest of the board of directors at St. Lawrence. And until then, we will see you all later.